Fan base, we won. You made your voice heard when the first Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl was announced. You campaigned for Jane to be a playable fighter before it was released, and even harder when she wasn't in the base roster. As always, it was your insatiable appetite for more Teenage Robot that got her in the game. Sure, it was paid DLC, but she was in the game, right where she belongs. Only two years have passed since Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl's release, and All Ray has a sequel. This time, Jenny is front and center on the cover. It's clear that the publisher is well aware of the newfound popularity of the character. Obviously, I'm excited that there's some sort of teenage robot renaissance in the air between the game appearances, all of the merchandise that we've been getting from YouTubes, and Rob's new story on top of it all. As My Life's Teenage Robot fans, we are very lucky right now. But with that said, can the game justify its $50 price tag, especially so soon after the first game's release? Luckily for us, I was given a review copy of the game, so I have some answers for you now. No punches held. But first, let's see how good their My Life is Teenage Robot representation is. As soon as you boot into the game, Jenny can be seen with her ghostly boyfriend, Danny Phantom. They're having a romantic date on the online play icon. Don't pop your champagne yet, guys. Believe it or not, that's only the beginning. Something the developers have been showcasing since the game was announced is changes to gameplay. The game introduces a slime charging system that can be depleted for stronger attacks, or you can conserve your slime for the game's equivalent of a final smash, called Supers. Jenny's super attack is her Shiva Blades, famously used in Doom with a View and Rag the Android. This probably isn't a hot take. This is a pretty uninspired special. Especially when you consider how cool the others are, this one feels kind of phoned in. There's so much more potential in Teenage Robot. Maybe she could turn to her Hulk-like puberty form from Hostile Makeover. Maybe she could trick the higher ranking cluster bots into blowing up her opponents. A lot of people were predicting she would call in the other XJ units, kind of like Mega Man's Final Smash. Maybe that would have pushed the Smash comparisons a little too close for comfort, but still better than a kind of lame one-off. This game also introduced rolling and air dodging. I have to say that this addition makes the game way more fun to play. When I played All-Star Brawl 1 on stream, I had a very hard time, and part of that was because of what I thought was awkward movement. As it turns out, the lack of rolling was probably my problem. I can't really see a reference in the roll itself, but when she breaks out of it, it looks like she's doing the classic pose from Return of the Raggedy Android. When Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 was announced, they made it clear that they were overhauling movesets. Some characters play completely different than what they did in the previous game. Every change that I've seen has been for the best, and it makes the characters way more fun to play as. However, Jenny's moveset remains largely the same from her last game. I think this was the right call. Jenny's moveset is glowing with inspiration and admiration for the original series. Every move is a reference in some way. They changed the way that grabs work. Instead of Jenny picking up the enemy free to wander the stage with them, she now has a variety of grab attacks that she can pull off. Her up and back throws don't seem to be a reference to anything in particular, but her down throw is clearly monkey's paw, and her front throw is crossbow, both shown in Raggedy Android. Outside of the new mechanics they've added, only one of Jenny's moves seemed to have been changed. Her side special is now her mass hammer attack, also originally shown in Raggedy Android. And she has two new taunts. Jenny chilling with her sunglasses on from Toying with Jenny, and Swiss Mix from Raggedy Android. At first, I thought they managed to incorporate every single attack that Nora mentions in this sequence, but it turns out that they didn't include Jenny's most iconic weapon, her laser pistol. They made some balancing changes to Jenny's moveset, but they cover those changes pretty well in their own showcase video. There were also changes made to the Tremerton stage. The main one is that the music doesn't morph when the stage does which is a change I actually really like. There are a lot of smaller changes, including the demolition of Brad's house in favor of the Tremerton sign being closer to Jenny's house, new citizens running around the streets, and less aggressive cluster ships. After we released our Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 1 video, they added voice lines to the game. A much-needed change, and the first time that Janice Kawhi voiced Jenny in over a decade. 
As good as it is to have her back, there was a serious problem with the use of her dialogue. In the arcade mode, she would just say a random line of dialogue from the original series. A lot of it had no context and really didn't make any sense. It was clearly an afterthought. That shine! That bumper! What a dream boat! They went into Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 knowing that they were going to include these voices, giving them more time to write dialogue that actually fits the game. This makes a huge difference and helps make the characters feel like they should, not like an action figure of themselves. Here are some of Jenny's new voice lines. Get ready for a high-voltage Heimlich maneuver. Nobody mind controls me and gets away with it. I'm going after that ghost. Meow. I'll have to have Mom upgrade me so I can understand what snails say. Meow, meow. Don't know how all this mess started, but I'm not going anywhere till I've beaten that ghost. A giant jellyfish? Now I've seen everything. Gosh. I let my mom down big time. Another very welcome change to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 is Candy Milo's return as Dr. Nora Wakeman. For the first time in forever, she acts as a storekeeper in the campaign mode. Nora randomly might have the most lines of any character in the game, and Candy's performance is just as good as it was in 2003. Every chance I got, I would check and see if she had a new dialogue option. I'm considering linking the thermal modulator with the full bridge rectifier. Thoughts? Looking for some upgrades? Before I found myself here, I was in my lab, as I often am. There was a crackle of energy, then a strange smell. A uh, fried banana. And voila! Here I was! My research on this place is uncovering startling information. I don't know how this can be, but apparently this place exists outside both time and space as we know it. And saving my favorite for last, here's the first conversation between Jenny and Nora since the end of my life as a teenage robot. Mom, you're safe! Next, Jane Nyan, you were brought here as well, I see. There I was, calibrating my tools in the lab, and this creature claiming to control time appeared. How could I resist his invitation? Time manipulation, interdimensional portals, mind control powers, it is as fascinating as it is scary. This place is begging to be studied. I'll begin investigating its boundaries immediately. This could revolutionize the very foundations of science. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Mom. You have no idea, my dear. <laughs> Think about the technological advances I might make here. Meanwhile, do feel free to browse the inventions I have with me now. Surely you'll find something useful. Oh, there you are, X-A-9. Goodness, whatever has happened, my dear? Not exactly sure yet, but I'm glad you're okay, Mom. But what about the others? Brad, Tuck, and Sheldon? Calm down, dear. I'm sure they're all right. For now, we need to focus on how to escape this place. You're right. I can't do anyone any good trapped here. I'm sure you'll do your best. You always do, XJ9. Thanks, Mom. You're the best. That was yet another amazing gift to the community for the show's 20th anniversary. Within the campaign mode, you can run the cluster bots as common enemies. They come in various colors, and some of them seem to be officers from Escape from Cluster Prime. That's a pretty cool detail. Unfortunately, there are no teenage robot-themed bosses, but hopefully that opens the possibility of Vexus being playable through a future DLC. That's probably wishful thinking, but crazier things have happened. This campaign mode also features power-ups similar to Spirits in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's World of Light mode. The teenage robot-themed power-ups I've noticed are XJ2, Vexus's staff, Jenny's rocket power attack, and a cluster ship. Blue Knight also had early access to the game, and he confirmed they ran into an XJ8 power-up that I hadn't seen. Blue Knight has also confirmed something else, something that I can't say that I'm a fan of. So, Blue Knight got a code for the PS4 version, and I got one for Steam. My copy has three costumes for Jenny, returning from Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 1, Hot Rod Jenny's back. Or, if you hate Jenny's stupid teenage robot ass, you can play as the version that Armageddroid beat up. 
The third costume is just a shadow form of Jenny that you get by beating her again in the campaign mode. Blue Knight's copy had an additional costume though. His copy has Jenny's dress from Dancing with Michelle. What we think might have happened is that I've received the base version of the game, and Blue Knight got the Ultimate Edition. This Ultimate Edition features additional costumes for all of the fighters. This is something that gamers have gotten used to, but I think it's stupid to lock features like that behind a paywall. But what kind of paywall are we talking about here? Well, let's break down the different editions that you can buy. The base edition is going to cost you $49.99. However, if you want the already announced DLC pack for the game, you can fork over $69.99 for the deluxe edition. To be clear, that's for 4 new fighters and no new stages. As they should, many onlookers are rightfully mocking the DLC for this price point. You can buy it for $24.99 on its own. That's the same price as the first Smash Ultimate Fighter Pass, which featured 5 new characters and new stages too. Oh, but the Deluxe Edition won't get me that costume. No, if I want to play in Jenny's dress, I need to fork over $79.99. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate costs $59.99, has 69 completely unique characters in its base roster, and over 100 stages. I know that the developers don't want to be compared to Smash Ultimate, but it's the elephant in the room, and the elephant is smoking hot. I know that this game can't be on the same level as Smash, it's still a lot of fun to play, and I would say it's a huge improvement over the previous game, but this price gouging needs to be pointed out. And as a My Life as a Teenage Robot fan who's seen a great drought of My Life as a Teenage Robot representation, I can't help but feel for fans of the characters who are cut. I'm so happy that Jenny's popular enough to return, but losing weird one-offs like Oblina for seemingly no reason is really sad to me. It's obvious that these cuts were made to promote the next Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl as the game that has everybody back. Depending on who you are, no matter how much you love My Life as a Teenage Robot, I think it's a respectable decision to wait two years for the third game to get your money's worth. I would also expect for there to be a large sale before Christmas. I don't want to burn any bridges with Game Miller Ludosity, but I value our viewers too much to sugarcoat the pricing issues with this game. I'm going to point out problems with the products that companies give me to promote. I still think this game is really fun. The developers put a lot of attention to detail into the references in this game, and they played a very important role in the promotion of my life as a teenage robot to a new generation of fans. I have never been skeptical of the developers' love for Nickelodeon and their characters. For that alone, the price of admission could be worth it to you. If I were to recommend a second my life as a teenage robot rep, I'd vote for Vexus. Anyways, now that the game's out, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. I've been Jack Hubert. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a rating. If you want to reach us, leave a comment. Or check out our other platforms. Links are in the description.